Hello, everyone. Um, I'm talking about the tsunami inundation mapping for the Upper East Coast region of the United States. Uh, in the first part of my talk, I will talk about how we did the inundation mapping, and in the second part, I will have some, I will know some observations and uh, some comparisons. I will show some comparison that we have. Um, so the project is funded by NTHMP to uh, generate high-resolution modeling and mapping for uh, at-risk and highly populated area in the Upper East Coast. So in order to do this, in uh, collaboration with our colleagues in the University of Rhode Island, we studied the history of sources in the Atlantic Ocean and used numerical simulation to model the source, the ocean propagation, and the uh, inland inundation for the areas shown in the map here. The nearshore bathymetric data was uh, achieved from either NOAA website or FEMA region 2 DEMs. So the sources that we use uh, are categorized into far field sources and near field sources. The far field sources, uh, the first one is, was the Camara Vieja volcanic collapse. We studied two different slides for that source in Canary Island, uh, 40, 450 cubic kilometer and 80 cubic kilometer. And uh, also, the second source was, the, uh, was an, an earthquake in Gibraltar Azores convergence zone. Uh, it's actually replica replicating the historic event in 18th century. And also, finally, the uh, eruption in the Puerto Rico trench zone, known, as, known also as the Caribbean subduction zone. Uh, the uh, gauge values for all of these sources are shown in the green dot in this slide and also the uh, red box shows the uh, boundaries that we recorded the data from uh, high, low resolution data in, uh, in the ocean uh, to perform near shore uh, high resolution analysis. Also we had some near field sources, uh, landslides, and uh, we used the historic Currituck event, the geometry of that event and mapped it over the edge of the shelf in areas that will cause the largest damage. We, uh, the, uh, the figure on the bottom left shows the, the locations of those slides, the green dots. And also uh, the, black, the blue box there shows the computational domain that we use NH wave model to model the landslides. Then after 800 seconds of the landslide initiation, we recorded the surface elevation and velocities and exported that to our uh, propagation model. And the results for that, for all of the SMF sources we modeled here, are shown on the right side of this slide. Then uh, using our propagation model, FunWave TV, TVD, a fully nonlinear business model, we performed some nesting. Uh, as it is shown in this slide, uh, we uh, performed m m modeling with 500 resolution, uh, 125, 30 meter, and uh, 10 meter resolution for highly populated area. However, to uh, ach achieve our results, uh, it was shown that uh, for inundation line, at least the 30 meter resolution and 10 meter resolution is not that different. I will show, uh, show it in the future slides. Uh, using the data we have, uh, we generated maps for different areas on the uh, East Coast. Uh, for example, this is uh, an area close to Ocean City, and uh, these are the inundation depth maps we generated. The figure A shows the uh, envelope for the submarine mass failure sources. Uh, the figure B shows the envelope for co-seismic sources. However, is basically the Puerto Rico source since the Lisbon source is very small in comparison to all the other sources we have. And the two figures on the bottom show the Camara Vieja for 80 cubic kilometer and 450 cubic kilometer slide. And it was decided since uh, significantly the CVV 450, the figure D, is larger, significantly larger than the other sources and its return period fall beyond 10,000 years. We excluded that from inundation line calculating. However, we generated the maps for uh, that source too. Um, in addition to inundation depth maps, we generated the maximum velocity and maximum momentum flux, flux maps as well. And also for navigational and maritime uses, we generated the maximum wave height and maximum velocity maps as well. Then using the extent of the inundation depth maps, we calculate the inundation line. The red and the, uh, the, red and the green line in, uh, on the figure in the left 
shows the inundation line for 30 meter and 10 meter resolution. We use the uh, inundation line, uh, uh, we use the inundation depth results for the highest uh, resolution possible for each area. And then we combine those two lines to generate maps similar to the uh, figure on the right side, uh, the inundation, uh, inundation maps, and hand it to state people for emergency planning. Uh, also, in the figure on the left, I showed the inundation line for the CVV 450 source, which I mentioned that we excluded it from, uh, from our sources. Uh, and you can see it's significantly larger than the other sources, the envelope of all the other sources that we have. And also one thing that it's shown in that figure is that the 30 meter resolution, the uh, black line, and 10 meter resolution, the blue line, the inundation line calculating for those are very similar to each other. So uh, one, uh, one thing that people might be interested about is the comparison between the inundation, the tsunami inundation line and the flood hazard lines. Um, it was observed during uh, our, uh, our modeling that for areas that are directly hit by the tsunami, like the barrier island in this New York City area map uh, that we generated, uh, the tsunami is the dominant factor in comparison to the flood, uh, flood hazard uh, flood hazard. Uh, the green dots, the, uh, sorry, the red dots in the barrier island show on the uh, bottom of this figure shows the only inundated areas during the tsunami event. However, the blue line which represent the flood hazard line uh, shows a lot of areas are survived, uh, are not inundated during a flood hazard. However, uh, for areas that are protected like areas behind the barriers and uh, areas like LaGuardia uh, Airport area or even Manhattan itself, the flood hazard line is the dominant factor, most probably due to its, uh, time its larger time scale. Uh, the other observation we had during our modeling was uh, we depicted the uh, wave height distribution over the uh, whole East Coast. And we noticed for uh, all of the sources that we have, it's a similar pattern. Uh, in this figure, uh, the figure on the left shows the uh, wave height distribution for five meter depth contour shown in the figure in the right. Uh, for, uh, source, uh, for Puerto Rico source, the black line, and the CVV 80 cubic kilometer, the blue line here. As you can see, there is a very similar pattern, especially for the upper East Coast area. And there is, a, there is a, for example, there's a maximum in Rhode Island, in Montauk, in Atlantic City, in Ocean City. And it's, it actually it gets more interesting when we s notice that near field sources that we have, the submarine mass failure one, landslide two, landslide three, and landslide four, have same uh, wave height distribution pattern. And concerning the fact that Puerto Rico's source is coming from the south and the Cumbre Viejo source is coming from the east and two different uh, dynamics of the tsunami, uh, we hypothesized that maybe it's the uh, large shelf on the, uh, on the east coast that's deriving the tsunami waves and it's determining where it goes. So in order to investigate this, we performed the wave ray analysis. We located 3,000 wave, uh, uh, initial wave ray locations on the south and 3,000 on the east with different angles and uh, traced those wave rays and calculated the wave ray concentration on the uh, same contour I showed in the previous slide. And again, we noticed a maximum value in Rhode Island, in Montauk, in Atlantic City, and Ocean City for both of the wave rays, uh, for both of the uh, locations we had, we placed the wave rays. So in uh, having the, these uh, wave ray analysis and also looking at the results and inundation maps we had, uh, this is the inundation line for the areas that we uh, model for the upper east coast. And we can say for areas like Atlantic City and Ocean City, due to presence of a Delaware Bay Canyon, which is a V-shaped structure uh, a bathymetric feature, the tsunami waves will get refracted toward areas like Ocean City and Atlantic City. 
Uh, the same thing happens for the area in, in the northern part of this domain, and due to existence of the Hudson River Canyon, the waves will get refracted toward northern New Jersey and western Long Island, and those are the, the areas that will get the most of the tsunami. So uh, before I move to conclusion, I want to make the point that what is the next step of this project? Uh, we know that tsunamis will uh, change the morphology of the beach a lot. Uh, for example, the figure on the left shows uh, it's Sendai, Sendai Bay in the after 2011 tsunami, before and after 2011 tsunami. Uh, the barrier island, it's completely disappeared after the tsunami. So taking a look at the Bethany Beach inundation depth map, that we provided here, and the cross section is shown here. What if we want to find the answer that what if the first wave of the tsunami erode the dune over here, and the second or the third wave, which could be larger than the first wave, uh, will be more effective than we think, and the inundation depth values will change in these areas behind the dune. So uh, we want to find the answer to if the morphological adjustment during tsunami inundation will increase the level of the tsunami hazard or not. So in conclusion, I can say that uh, we performed the study to uh, see the inundation mapping and uh, find the inundation line on the upper east coast region of the United States. And our inundation line showed that in a lot of areas, tsunami could be much more effective than uh, much more dominant than this, uh, the flood hazard line. Also, uh, our wave rate analysis showed that uh, maybe uh, there are lots of uncertainties about uh, these tsunamis on the east coast, where the source is, how large, is, uh, how large the source will be. But due to bathymetric features and the wide shelf, we can say most probably areas like Ocean City, Maryland, Atlantic City, New Jersey, northern part of uh, New Jersey and western side of Long Island will get the most of any tsunami with any size that will come on the East Coast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one question. Uh, Paul? Please repeat. Uh, the, uh, he asked uh, that if, what is the return period of the 80 cubic kilometer Camer Vieja. Um, unfortunately, there is not a deterministic answer to that question, but we know it's, it was, it's decided it's less than 10,000 years. The exact question is always a question. The exact answer, sorry. Actually, we had one more question. We can go ahead and go ahead with that. Yeah, yeah, and but the reason that that happened was most you know it, the the source is significantly larger to the other ones. Maybe that was it was decided that the return period of that event will fall beyond ten thousand years. The wave height for that source was more than ten meters. Uh, although for the other sources that we have, that number was huge, and that was that number was significant to every other source that we had. We didn't even have to calculate the envelope of the sources when we had that source. That source was itself the envelope, so it, it was decided to exclude that. <laughs> 